Thanks for clicking on to the Wednesday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Be sure to hit that like button, share with your friends and family, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. In today's video, I want to specifically look at the second half of May. As I've showed you in several times over in the recent days, this is the temperature normally across the continent of Europe for the first half of May. You can see here a very distinct west to east contrast. Uh, late winter conditions across Western Russia summer conditions across the majority of Western Europe. Now, we did see the big change in the pressure pattern over the course of the weekend, really high pressure dominating the majority of last week across the board. Then we've seen the eastern, um, basically the area of high pressure that dominated last week, moving off to the east and a frontal system moving in from the Atlantic. And that triggered some very, very lively thunderstorms across very uh, many areas of the UK during the course of Sunday in particular. The Manchester United played the uh, Arsenal and there was scenes of water uh, like cascading off the roof and at Old Trafford. I believe there was 27 millimetres of, uh, of rain fell within the space of just 18 minutes uh, in, in that part of Manchester. So one representation of the significant downpours that was seen spanning the length and breadth of the western half of the British Isles during the course of Sunday afternoon as that frontal system edged in off the Atlantic. And really since that, that area of low pressure has become the real dominant force across the bulk of the UK. It showers, longer spells of rain, embedded thunderstorms has been the case, especially across central and southern areas of the UK. Up here across the far north, we've actually got away with it. There's been quite a lot of sunshine. There's been temperatures as high as the low 20s. And that has been the mainstay through the majority of this work week. And it looks as if that's going to linger on through the remainder of this work week, where the actually the warmest temperatures anywhere in the British Isles will be along the Murray Coast, Northwest Highlands, etc., etc. We've got a frontal system that's essentially from kind of southeast to northwest orientated generally to the north of that really north of the central belt we've got away with it we've not really had an awful lot of rain there's only been 16 millimeters of rain fell here at mark Hogan weather hq for the whole of may so far yet we've had over a month's worth of rain in more southern parts of the uk and even i've been obviously you, you know um uh, my work schedule, I, I drive between Inverness and Glasgow and back each night. And even down across, uh, you know, Perthshire and the Central Belt, it's been relatively wet. But yet further north, there's been a lot less in the way of rain. We have seen rain here at hit and miss, but it's not been uh, particularly significant. But further south, it has been considerably wetter than up here across the far north of the country now this is the mean sea level pressure seen by the gfs ensemble for the upcoming seven day period you can see here that we've got a fairly large area of high pressure a cool high at that may i add across eastern europe whereas we've got this area of low pressure centered just to the southwest of the british isles and that has been feeding the unsettled conditions up the length of the uk with the exceptions of the very far north of the country in recent days here. So this is the mean sea level pressure anomaly chart here. This is the rainfall for the same period. And you can see um, what, uh, what we're talking about here. So this is the upcoming seven day period in terms of rainfall anomaly. You can see it's drier across the north, wetter across the south of the British Isles here. Temperature wise here, this is the upcoming seven day period in terms of the anomaly, so it's warmer than average, especially with the position of the low centered to the southwest. We've got that kind of east to southeast of the airflow. Always that bit uh, cloudier, mistier, murky along the east coast of England and uh, Scotland. Temperatures pegged back close to the sea surface temperature, which is about 9 or 10 Celsius. Southwest of the UK, we've actually got the uh, temperature slightly above average at around 14 Celsius. But along the east coast, we've got 9s and 10 Celsius. When you've got that air coming in off those cool North Sea waters, the air temperature quite close, it tends to closely match 
the sea surface temperature further west, especially with the you know the drying influence of winds crossing over the hills, you've got warmer temperatures the further west and northwest you go in the country. So back to the uh, back to the surface pressure chart here. This is um, what I, I kind of want to show today. The the how the pattern evolves as we progress through the course of next week. So we are going to continue to see showers uh, off and on over the next few days here. But as we play through this GFS ensemble, you can see how the heights start to increase in strength across the north. It's still very much a high over low profile within the mean sea level pressure pattern here. And this would be a, a continuation of the easterly winds. Now, this time of the year, remember that the jet stream is pretty much at its weakest point in the entire year. We've also got a lot of kind of stagnant weather patterns at the moment. There's not an awful lot in the mid to upper levels of the, the atmosphere to kind of steer the weather on. So therefore, we have quite a stagnated uh, and rather slow moving uh, pattern at this time of the year. But what is quite evident is as we move through the final you know, week to 10 days of May, it looks as if higher pressure is going to become more established. It's going to strengthen to the north between Scandinavia and Iceland. It's going to force lower pressure further south. Now, this is generally a, a transition through the upcoming weekend coming up here. So remember, we've seen high replaced by low last weekend. Now it looks as if we're going to see low being replaced by high this upcoming weekend. And I think we are going to see a more settled and drier final week to 10 days of May. That is the forecast that I did have for quite some time here in the channel. And it looks as if it's going to materialize. Now, what I, one, one thing I will say is with this orientation, with the core of highest pressure to the north of the British Isles, you tend to have a north to northeasterly airflow. That is not an overly warm scenario may actually be relatively subdued temperatures with this type of situation here. But all in all, I'm optimistic at least that this would deliver a drier theme towards the end of the month. And I do think we're going to see a drier than average uh, north, wetter than average south across the British Isles for the month of May here. So this is the final days of the month. And then as we step into the month of June, change comes also. Look at how we start to see heights lowering once again through the first days of summer 2024. The area of high pressure is now shifted to the west. Now, remember what's going on with the Manjulian oscillation at the moment here. It's relatively weak. It's relatively within the null phase, which means you don't get a great deal of driving force into the middle latitude and high latitude pattern when you've got a relatively weak jet. But what I am thinking of here jet and manjulian oscillation but you're you're seeing it in phase two and three at the moment and in yesterday's video i said that it may try to become a little bit more amplified in phases four and five if it does so my suggestion would be that we start to see higher pressure try to build back in over western europe and over eastern uh, north america as well with a phase four and five i certainly believe anyway that that phase four and five that was seen about 10 days ago drove the, the very, very warm spell during the latter half of last week into the early portions of the, of the weekend just gone, where we had 27 Celsius in the southeast, 26 Celsius in the northwest of the country. We had very warm temperatures over the eastern half of the United States as well. I think that was a reflection of phase four and five. But we are seeing this transition through phases one, two into three the question mark is uh, do we see it going back into phase four and five now we can join more dots up with regards to the sea surface temperature profile within the equatorial pacific between south america and the maritime continent we are obviously seeing a transition uh, to colder waters in the eastern equatorial pacific still very warm towards australia and indonesia that tends to have uh, sinking over Eastern Pacific, rising there over the far Western Pacific, Australia, Southeast Asia, we start to see that phase four or five MJO potential and therefore what influence is that going to have 
on the early and mid portions of the summer. That is what I'm looking at in, in quite a bit of detail at this moment in time. Remember, next Sunday, a week on Sunday, the 26th of May, summer forecast will be released live here on YouTube at 4 p.m. in the live stream. So something to uh, take note of if you, if you don't already know that. But certainly very interesting stuff going on at the moment here with regards to the pressure building from the north as we end the month of May, then they start to collapse as we start the uh, beginning of the summer. Remember, this is just the GFS ensemble. There's umpteen models, ECMWF. There's the Meteo France UK Met model as well. All these different models are going to have some different solutions to it. But nonetheless, this is rather interesting stuff uh, for sure. This is uh, back to the precipitation anomaly here. So you can see what I'm showing you with regards to the precipitation situation <laughs> this is the uh, obviously the upcoming seven days so dry north wet south so it's going to be a slow process through the latter half of this week and into the weekend here with regards to the shower activity we're going to continue to see that frontal system generate showers longer spells of rain really from east anglia the southeast up through towards the northwest Western half of Scotland even as well. We're going to see some showers developing over the next few days, I think. But let's play it through the, the QPF model here. So this is the GFS Ensemble Rainfall Anomaly. And you see how we start to see uh, drier, uh, temp, uh, drier conditions set in as we progress towards the final days of the month. Nothing particularly notable in terms of those brown colors but nonetheless it's a drier than average sing signal for the majority of the british isles here not all is going to stay dry i don't think but uh, nonetheless it looks as if we have a drying theme into next week as the heights come down but remember with a northeasterly flow you can still get charge developing on that northeasterly flow and therefore it's not all plain sailing and dry but this is a you know, the final days of the month, beginning of June and meteorological summer. You can see here that we almost start to hint at something a little bit wetter once again, either average, the slightly above average precipitation, stepping into the first week of June. Remember, the heights are starting to come down at this stage, and we may have a relatively subdued beginning that's probably the best way to put it a subdued start to summer in terms of temperature and overall pattern speaking of temperature this is the upcoming seven days in terms of the anomaly here and we've got the warmer than average as i already showed you as we play through so look at spain portugal and france below average conditions here uk warmer than average scandinavia warmer than average central europe warmer than average but also we've got that below average temperatures across russia continuing now as we step out of may into the month of june you notice here that it's uh, the model is picking up in warmer than average uh, temperatures over the waters but actually over the uk mainland and ireland also we've actually got average to slightly below average conditions because of the wind direction yes we've got high pressure and control by the looks of it but that wind direction is coming in from a relatively cold source region. So therefore, we're going to see temperatures reasonably subdued to begin the month of June. This is according to the GFS ensemble, obviously. So, uh, you know, you have to take this somewhat with a pinch of salt, given the fact that it's only one model run. Finally, let's have a look and see what the uh, the visible satellite uh, image is looking for today. So we've got this frontal system associated with the low, which is still spinning, locked in place by high pressure either side of it to the southwest of the UK and Ireland at the moment. There's that boundary here bringing a bank of cloud. We've got outbreaks of rain associated with that as well, but it's uh, a largely fine day across the Gulf of Wales, across uh, the West and South Midlands into the far south of England as well. We've got the reasonably sunny conditions. We've got more in the way of cloud cover, really from Somerset all the way down to the southwestern corner of uh, of Devon and Cornwall here. As you can see, high level cloud across Northern Ireland and the Republic. Very sunny conditions north of the central belt, as you can see, 
uh, in the, this current visible satellite image. This look at the radar image here. So this is the current radar across the country at the time of recording this afternoon. You can see those showers outbreaks along that boundary. We've got some uh, a kind of feeder band here coming off the Netherlands here over the North Sea, clipping the, the coast of Norfolk, if you notice here, and possibly up into parts of Yorkshire as well. Here we may see outbreaks of rain from Br Bridlington down towards the, uh, the, uh, the Spurn Head uh, area. Some outbreaks of rain over the Midlands, up into Cumbria, for example, southwestern uh, Scotland, also western parts of the Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, maybe some bed thunderstorms, for example, in the western flank of uh, the Republic of Ireland. Plenty of showers uh, developing over the north of France here, heavy thundery showers at that as well. Finally, let's have a look at the two, uh, the temperature profile here of medial seal. So we've got the warmest conditions, like I said, anywhere in the UK across the far north west of Scotland. Where we've got the onshore breeze, temperatures are pegged back 12.7. We've got the only 14.2 at Tain, but 22 Celsius at Lockless Garnock and 23.2 at Alt Nahara is fairly pleasant conditions, even 19 up at the, at Stornoway. Further south, underneath that cloud, we've got temperatures pegged back at the teens. In the sunshine, just to the south of the boundary, we've got 19 to around 21 Celsius. In the cloud uh, across the far southwest, we've only got 12, 13 Celsius. Rather chilly for the end of May, or the middle of May, should I say, actually. It's because I've been talking about the end of May. Uh, in terms of uh, Ireland and Northern Ireland, we've got the temperatures around uh, you know, 18, 19 Celsius. In some places, the Dublin area looks around 21 Celsius at the moment as well. So plenty of things going on at the moment here. Big weekend coming up. Weather Talk Episode 3 will be released on Saturday and we'll put the live stream coming up this Sunday as usual. So like, share and subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow hopefully with more. Bye for now.